Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to go through my top four tips for using the Mass Assistant in your class notebook. Okay, let's have a look at these four tips. Now, I have also written them out for you in our shared notebook which you can find by just looking under the bottom of this video. So in the description, you can get access to this little OneNote that Andrew and myself have created. And so where we're going to look to find this is if we click on the how to section, and then here in the ribbon section, you'll see these drop down menus. And we're going to specifically refer to the maths one and then to the maths assistance section here. So here we are, and we're looking for this top four tips for using the maths assistant. Now that there will drop down and those four tips will be there. And that's what I'm going to go through with you today. So you can just see here, I've just given some little instructions as to what we're going to be looking at and using today. So we're going to be looking at the equation tool and that maths assistant tool combined together and they're found in two different ribbons. So at the top here, these are the ribbons. And in the insert tool, you can see here, I can see the equation and the maths one. And in the draw tool, wait, I can see just the maths one. The maths one is, is pretty much a double up of um, the one that's in the insert one. Please do keep in mind, this will look different depending on what version of OneNote you're using. Some things will be there. Some things won't be there um, or some things will be in a different place. So let's look at our very first tip for using the mass assistant. All right, this is idea of either writing versus typing. So here on my screen, I'm gonna grab my stylist. Um, this guy here, this is using stylus. So grabbing a pen, so if I'm going, I'm going to hit the black pen at the top here and just over to the left, I'm going to write. So there's my two. So if you have a stylus enabled device, so one of these guys, you can definitely jump onto a screen and handwrite. Okay. My big tip here is it must be clear. So it does sometimes take a little bit of time for your students to get used to writing nice and clear for the computer to understand their own writing. The other option here is using the equation tool. So that is this one over here on this side. So in a way, just typing out the equation. And what I might do is I'm just gonna drop down here and we'll have a look at how that works. So when I'm here in the insert ribbon, you have this option here for equations and I'm just put myself over there. Um, depending, you know, if you're a math teacher, a lot of these will look very um, familiar to you, but I'm just going to jump into recent structures. But at the top here, you can see that there are more structures and you can work your way through those structures accordingly to what you're teaching. But I'm looking for this guy here. And if I look back up at what my equation was, it was two times three over 12. If I click on the top box, I can write my two. And then I use symbols here on the right hand side. So recent symbols that I've used times three and then clicking down on the bottom one. And I think I said 12 before. So that will type out the equation for me as well. So if you don't have students or that your students don't have devices that are stylus enabled, you can definitely just type out using the equation tool and that will keep things nice and simple for you. All right, let's look at our next tip here. And that will be demonstrating the use of the tools. Okay, so we have um, an example here of a question, you know, a student's been given and they've got to a certain point and they're stuck. Now, what I mean by demonstrating the use is that there's no real way of you knowing if a student, if they're working independently or at home or on their own, whether they've used this mass assistant or not. And you could be completely blinded by, you know, their amazing mass ability until it comes test time and things don't quite seem the way they should be. 
So I used to, with my students, work to encourage them to be honest when they used the tool. So if this is, you know, my students worked along and they've got, you know, to the next step and they're not sure, and this means that they've used the mass tool. So I'd always ask them to split down here into two lines. And what we're seeing here is the assistant side of it. So I'm gonna give you um, an example of that. So what the student has done is they've got stuck at this point here. So in the draw tool, we grab the lasso, which is up here at the top in draw. And then with the lasso, so I think I clicked it too many times, I can grab around, there we go, the part where I've got stuck. And then right up here in the top right hand corner, still in draw, it will work in draw as I have the mass tool. So I can click this one and you can see that it has brought up the equation typed out. From here, I can click to evaluate, which will give me my answer, but I can click to show the steps. And what you're gonna see here is an exact replica of what is on the page. So what I would, if I go down here and replicate what I've done, is what I would encourage my students to do is if they've used it, is to pick it up, drag it over and drop it in. You know, they can tidy that up and extend it. And at least then they're showing that they've used the assistant to solve. And then always naturally then in the second column, encourage them to keep solving or read the instructions and write the answers as they go. Our next tip here is using the immersive reader tool. So following on from when um, the students use the assistant tool to um, you know, get a little bit of help to help them through the rest of the question, we can use this immersive reader tool to walk through the steps if needed be, especially um, when we're working with students where reading might be difficult um, and that could be due to their, their reading level or um, English not necessarily being their very first language. And what that will do is will open up this immersive reader tool and it will read it how it is mathematically written. So if I go again here, I'm going to select the question, I go maths tool, just like we did before, evaluate, show steps. Here's our immersive reader button. And if I click on this guy, it becomes, it's gonna look pretty much like I had before. We have separate tutorials on how to use immersive reader. So I'm not going to get into that today to save time, time but I now as a student have full access to the benefits of immersive reader. Let's jump out of that. And we're gonna to go to our fourth and our last tip. Is definitely encourage the use of practice quizzes. They are brilliant at getting students to challenge themselves, to self assess as well. And it also saves you a little bit of time in regards to that practice quizzing space. So, I, what I would do is I, you know, like I've kind of written here is I put some instructions about what I want you to do. And I might even just put the question in for them. Sometimes I even encourage them to think of a question on their own. And what we do is also very useful is tell them where you want them to place it. Because the whole point of, you know, using the class notebook is that you're going to review it. It's so much easier if they're always in the same place for you. So try to indicate or put cues or a box there or something where you want them to place their quiz. And what it's going to use is it's going to use some AI to generate like questions to the one that they selected. So let's demonstrate this and it will look kind of like what we've got here. Is that like before, I'm gonna select the question. I'm going to click the math tool again and I'm going to go evaluate. And then we have down here, generate a practice quiz. So I'm gonna click on that. And in my instructions that I gave to the students, it says that they needed to do 10. And last time I checked, you can do up to 20. So I'm gonna go generate that quiz. And what it's going to do is start using something called Microsoft Forms. It's going to 
pull that data and information through. I'm gonna click through here and just change this so we can see what we're doing. There we go. And you can see here I've kind of reshaped it, the one uh, above, we'll leave that for now. But here I have my practice quiz and it's individualized to me because I'm logged in um, under my account and it's generated a series of multiple choice questions. Now, when students go through, I would normally ask them to put the working out in the OneNote as well, and then they can go through, they can click submit down the bottom here, and then that will actually return them their answers straight away. So, you know, feedback, although it's not, um, it's just kind of yes or no, you've got it wrong or right, it is still a form of feedback and it's quite instant for them, which is, you know, quite powerful at the same time. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my top four tips for using that math assistant in your class. Notebook, get out there, have a go, and have a bit of fun with it. I will see you again soon. Cheers. Don't forget to follow us. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing, and make sure that you write any comments in the comment section in regards to questions you might have, or if you have any ideas that you want us to present on. Thanks, guys.